you tweeted out, this is not in the classroom setting, the following. All right, so I will read the tweet so the audience knows how this all began. One, if African Americans as a group had the same behavioral profile as Asian Americans, on average, performing the best academically, having the highest income, committing the lowest crime, et cetera, would we still be proclaiming systemic racism exists? That's number one. Number two, black privilege is real. Besides a firm action, special scholarships, and other set-asides, being shielded from legitimate criticism is a privilege. But as a group, they are missing out on much-needed feedback. May I say, bold tweets, <laughs> pretty much ever, but certainly from a university professor in June of 2020. <clears throat> so did you, did you know that you were going to get blowback from those? Okay, so I mentioned my controversial course, Cross-Cultural Psychology, because I address all these issues in that course. We get into very thorny issues. I'm a very data-driven professor, so everything I say is linked to data for the students, for the students. So I'm not averse to going on Twitter and saying things that are in line that I say in my controversial course, but I need to give you a 30-second background because my situation didn't quite begin with the tweets. One month before the George Floyd death and my Twitter scandal, the University of Central Florida hired a new president. And on day one, he declared his primary mission for the university is to make it the national model for diversity, equity, and inclusion. So oh, I sent primary. him Primary. I'm sorry? Primary, the primary mission. Okay. That's okay. right. Not, not, not to increase academic standards, not to make sure our students are getting jobs when they graduate, but to make the university, the national model for diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I'm a minority. I study minority issues. I wrote him a letter welcoming him to the university, but, and I let him know that I support minority, and I, I've been mentoring them for all my adult career. But I'm, a, I'm familiar with diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's a very racist and divisive ideology. And I told him, I hope we can meet sometime to discuss this further. This is one month before George Floyd was killed and before my Twitter scandal. So he didn't, he ignored me, but I was on his radar. And so when the social mob descended upon University of Central Florida and me demanding I be fired, he was, came after me. He, he weaponized the Office of Equity to launch a pretextual investigation into my entire 20 plus year career with the university. Wait, and that, let, let me I'm let sorry. me let me pause you there. Let me pause okay. you there because this is that's okay. like the most outrageous piece of this. So yes, you're a minority, as I understand it, uh, half Hispanic and also gay. And, so that's right. normally this would this would make you you know a card carrying member of the DEI crowd, and they would love you, and they'd be super happy to have you on board. And but it, we've seen this before with people like Glenn Lowry, who is a black man in America, right. who's first at Harvard, now at Brown, who pushes back on some of these ideas, and he too gets the, all this blowback. So it it doesn't save if you're not woke, those That's credentials right. don't save you. So you send these tweets out. Of course, it's almost like an evergreen situation where they're protesting yeah. outside of your home and they're shouting at you and they're <clears throat> acting like. I mean, like you were there when George Floyd was killed. Yeah. I mean, like the really, yeah. the overreaction was severe, which is bad enough, but students, oh, we know how they are. Terrible in today's day and age. But then the administration, mm -hmm. the ones who are supposed to be the grownups, the adults in the room. That's correct. Launch an investigation. I mean, if you want to like talk about witch hunt, this was the mm -hmm. most witch hunty thing yeah. I've ever seen them do to a professor. Tell us what they did. So the, the director of the Office of Equity uh, queried me for two days, four and a half hours each day, asking me, did you say this comment in 2009? Did you say this comment in 2005? And just went on and on and on for four and a half hours for two days. And I did my best to answer as honestly as I could. I tried to, the, the complaints that they, 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 they orchestrated this massive public solicitation of complaints from disgruntled students. I taught over 30,000 students. Imagine that, it's a big university. So they found a couple of hundred students who came forward with complaints saying I said one thing or another in class that is viewed from the lens of critical race theory, diversity, equity, and inclusion violates that ideology. So in the end, after seven months, they put together a 243 page investigative report saying, here's all the reasons why they're justified in firing me, a tenured professor. So to my utter surprise, they fired me. 
And as you may know, but your audience doesn't, I had a union and they assigned me an attorney and it took a year and a half for me to have a four day hearing, at which point at the end, the arbitrator ruled that there was no just cause to have fired me and ordered UCF to rehire me with all my back pay and all my benefits. And they refused to pay me for four months until they received a notification from my private attorney, Samantha Harris, who's a free speech expert, that we plan to sue them in federal court. And that's when all of a sudden they dropped all my back pay into my bank account. So as of right now, we have filed the lawsuit and the process is in motion. The, what they, they tried to embarrass you and it was Ooh. absurd. They basically said anybody who has any dirt on Professor Negi, c- please complain. I mean, I've seen your letter. Like it was actually, t- you can tell me who it was, but it looks like the head of the school and one of the deans were openly saying, we've got to get him. It's going to take a while. Like they were pretty, was like right. on the nose. They're not allowed to, to hire, to fire you for your free mm-hmm. speech on Twitter. That your tenure right. professor, they, they can't do it. So That's they're right. trying to find ways. Of, so they're basically just open calling who can help us get him. Mm-hmm. There was. And you said, try to embarrass me. They humiliated me. They wanted to crush me, make me homeless, which if I hadn't had some resources and some friendly people in the community, I would have been. Because imagine for the first time in almost 30 years being without an income. I had to sell my house below market level and try to find someone to rent some rooms to me and my my husband and my disabled brother who I care for. So they wanted to just annihilate me and hold me hold my head up as a trophy for all the social justice warriors, for all the DEI advocates that this is what we did. And they probably wanted to send a message to other professors that if you question this ideology, this is what will happen to you as well. Mm-hmm. That's it. So that's I think that's actually a huge piece of this, right? They need to appease the mob, the mob being the DEI group within the student body. I'm sure not every student was in on this, but the DEI crowd, they fancy themselves like modern day civil rights activists, Mm -hmm. nothing of the kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So they needed to appease the mob, but they also need to send a message because you tell me, do you think the administrators who are doing this to you believe in the cause? Are they ideologically aligned with these students on this or are they just scared weaklings who just needed to do what they needed to do or else that would be their head in a basket. The president fully drinks Kool-Aid. He's the one wanting to make UCF the national model of DEI. And the director of Office of Equity, she also is fully on board with this ideology. So, and of course, the chief diversity officer as well. The provost, I'm not sure. He he wanted to be provost, so he'll probably do anything or say anything just so he could have that position. But um, no, UCF who happens to be on Governor DeSantis's radar, uh, they're fully trying to shove this ideology down all of our throats. And they're doing everything they can to circumvent the efforts of Governor DeSantis to put a stop to this ideology. Make, because this is say, a state school. Uni- universities have no business promoting any ideology. Professors have free speech and so do the students, but the university, the administrators who are spokespeople for the state institution, they should not be promoting astrology, Christianity, Islam, or diversity, equity, and inclusion. But they mm-hmm, think they can which do is this, a religion and too. they're going to try to be the best to get away with it. Spring is finally here. The days are getting longer. It's so nice, isn't it? It's so nice to have them get a little longer. The weather's getting a little warmer, too. I mean, it is. I hate to even say it out loud, but it is. And we know what this means. It's time to get outside and enjoy your backyard. What better way to do that than with the Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas? The Michael Phelps Signature Swim Spa is the perfect way to create your perfect backyard this season and for many seasons to come. Designed to be used year-round, you can swim, exercise, and relax in the convenience and privacy of your backyard. It's like having your own private oasis at home. Plus, delivery and installation take less than a day once your space is ready. The water current creates resistance so that you can swim in place. And because it is heated, you can choose your perfect water temperature. Enjoy pure relaxation in the massage therapy seats of the swim spa. Michael Phelps swim spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. You are gonna love your Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas. Go to masterspas.com MK for a special offer right now. You'll save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps swim spa or $500 on a Master Spas 
hot tub. Again, go to masterspas.com slash MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.